Hi, I'm Valerie Bodell, representing Orly, the Harvey P. Carr name story, with story by Harvey P. Carr and art by R. Crumb. First, an introduction. Harvey P. Carr had many different artists draw his autobiographical comics, and each one drew him differently. Those artists include R. Crumb, Greg Budget, Gary Dumb, Kevin Brown, and Jerry Shamray. Could any one of these representations ever be said to be more accurate than another? Or does each one depict a different aspect? The Harvey P. Carr name story has very regular images. Each page has 12 squares, called panels, three across and four down. In each square, an image of P. Carr is visible from about the middle of his body up. Sometimes his hands are visible, and sometimes his arms are down at his sides. Usually he is facing fully out at the reader, but occasionally he turns to reveal a three-quarter profile. In each panel, P. Carr has a slightly different expression and stance. Page 1. My name has been a matter of some concern to me over the years. It's an unusual name, Harvey P. Carr. Harvey doesn't really go well with P. Carr, not in a conventional sense, at least. I've read in various places that Harvey is of either Celtic, Germanic, or French origin. Yet P. Carr is a Slavic name. Strangely, I'm neither Celtic, Germanic, French, or Slavic. A silent static image stares out from a square halfway down the page. Then, when I was younger, my acquaintances would tease me because of my name. They'd say, Harvey P's in his car. Once my best friend made an admittedly witty remark about my name. He said, what comes after the dining car? The P car. Despite this, we remained friends. Page two. A silent panel begins the next page. Later, some people started calling me Harvey Pecker. I didn't like that. Picard's image now has an angry expression, and his left hand is clenched in a fist and held in front of his body. Then there were those who referred to me as Harvey the Rabbit. They thought they were being quite clever. Picard glares grimly out of the page in another silent panel. In the next two panels, Picard keeps his left fist visible and has a tough expression while he explains, but I was a physically strong and determined young man. As time went on, I gained the respect of my peers, in one way or another. They stopped making nasty references to my name. For a while, I forgot about it. It was as if I was named John Smith. I married at an early age. Page 3. My wife, who would one day become my ex-wife. In the next two panels, Picar smiles, the only smiles in the four pages of this story. And he continues... My wife thought that I had an excellent name, and she convinced me that I did. It was a unique name, a name with character. I was married in the summer of 1960 and promptly got a telephone. The next spring, a new phone book came out. Imagine my surprise when I turned to my name and saw that, in addition to me, another Harvey Picar was listed. I was listed as Harvey L. Picar. My middle name is Lawrence. He was listed simply as Harvey Picar. No middle initial. Therefore, his was a pure listing. But I learned to accept it. Each year, I would feel less strongly as I saw the other Harvey P. Carr's name. Then, in 1966, I noticed that a third Harvey P. Carr was listed in the phone book. This filled me with curiosity. How could there be three people with such an unusual name in the world, let alone in one city? P. Carr follows his question with a silent, pensive panel. I once got a long-distance call at midnight for a Harvey P. Carr. It was a woman calling from Florida. I didn't know her. She had mistaken me for one of the other Harvey P. Cars. Page 4. The call caused me to wonder what sort of person he was. Of course, I had no way of knowing. Then, one day, a person I worked with expressed her sympathy to me concerning what she thought was the death of my father. I knew my father to be alive and in good health and asked her where she'd gotten the notion that he died. She pointed out an obituary notice in the newspaper for a man named Harvey Picar. One of his sons was named Harvey. These were the other Harvey Picars. In a silent panel, Picar looks reflective. Six months later, Harvey Picar Jr. died. Although I'd met neither man, I was filled with sadness. What were they like, I thought. It seemed that our lives had been linked in some indefinable way. The next year's telephone directory contained only my name. But the story does not end there, for two years later, another Harvey P. Carr appeared in the directory. What kind of people are these? Where do they come from? What do they do? What's in a name? Who is Harvey P. Carr? 
The story ends with a silent panel. Perhaps Picar is lost in thought.